hi and welcome back to my channel i want to start off today's video by thanking each and every one of my subscribers for being here we just hit over 2,000 subscribers and i am so glad to have each and every one of you here on my little corner of the internet i hope to see more subscribers in the future but i appreciate the ones that took the time to subscribe and join this community now let's get into the into today's video today's video is about the time port of spain was burned to the ground now today if you walk through port of spain you're going to see a modern metropolis high-rise buildings a beautiful waterfront we have historical buildings it is beautiful however there was a time when this city experienced a tragedy that left buildings and homes flattened by a fire but how did this fire start and who started it so to understand how this fire was able to spread to such an extent we have to understand the infrastructure of the buildings of port of spain in 1808 so from about 1783 port of spain saw an influx of french settlers free blacks from grenada and the other french islands coming to port of spain and bringing their architecture into the infrastructure so the french were bringing a lot of their woodwork to port of spain so most of the buildings were now being constructed constructed of wood and with beautiful wood shingles and fretwork all over the buildings now and just as port of spain is laid out like a grid today that was the same structure in 1808 approximately 4,000 to 6,000 people lived in port of spain at that time and it was quite a scene there were people of various nationalities coming together living in port of spain whether rich or poor and there were people coming there to, to become a part of the prosperity that was growing in port of spain so with the wooden infrastructure in mind and the multi-racial multicultural society in mind let's meet our culprit who started this fire so Dr. Shaw was a Scottish doctor who found himself settled in Port of Spain in the 1800s. Now apparently around this time, as the French were coming in, a lot of Scottish people were coming in and they wanted to join in this prosperity that Port of Spain was experiencing. It was obviously a really um, prosperous and um, booming economy in Port of Spain and everybody wanted a bite. So, in the early 1800s, Dr. Shaw established his medical practice and his pharmacy at number 12 Lower Frederick Street. So on the night of March 24th, 1808, Dr. Shaw arrived at his building, his medical practice, late at night after a night out with the guys. Apparently he wanted to use the washroom, so he illuminated his way through the building to the back outhouse with a flambeau in hand and it is not um, determined or sure how the blaze started if he dropped the flambeau because he was a little inebriated he was a little drunk if he dropped it if he fell asleep and it slipped out of his hand but everything there was the perfect storm for this fire in the back he housed a lot of wooden crates a lot of barrels holding um, chemicals for his pharmacy because remember back in the days pharmacists used to mix chemicals to create medicines so they actually had a lot of different flammable chemicals in stock and he was no exception he had just received quantities of sulfur n I don't know if it's pronounced nitre or nita ether lots of rectified spirits and essential oils now all of this was perfect kindling for a raging fire an explosion actually occurred from those chemicals explode you know igniting and exploding and from there with, with the wooden infrastructure in mind it was the perfect recipe for disaster the destruction was on 
unfathomable. Now apparently there were very gusty winds coming down from the Lavantil Hills and this swept the fire across all the buildings leaping from one building to the next and they were, you know they're all flammable they're all made of wood and shingles now this fire happened late at night like i mentioned before so it caught people in their sleep people were awoken to their houses being on fire people in a panic jumped out of windows ran out of their homes with nothing but the clothes on their back and apparently some people didn't even have that so in literally minutes the entire city was glowing on fire people were running through the streets shops and buildings that housed gunpowder exploded and that increased the destruction and the rage of this fire it leaped from street to street women and children were running through the streets trying to get to the waterfront to get away from the fire so the men of the town joined with the soldiers of the 37th and the 8th regiment who were housed in the barracks where the hospital is now and they all in a vain attempt tried to battle this fire the water pumps that were um, available were all neglected and left in disrepair so when they were trying to use them they were literally falling apart they didn't even have enough water in them so that was a whole a whole effort of I don't know you know how things are apparently things in Trinidad still are left to be neglected from since 1808 they experienced the same thing so they tried to battle with it the pumps and the water hoses all of that broke down and so the fire was left to rage on horses and mules that were tethered to buildings were heard screaming as they burned to death some people actually got caught in homes that they could not escape. They were heard screaming as they were burned alive. Now me just thinking about that is heart wrenching. Sorry if you could hear noise, you know I live in on a main road. But just to think about that terror and that devastation and hearing people and animals screaming, that must have been so heartbreaking and traumatic. I can't even. I can't even imagine going through something like that. So 12 square blocks were completely burned to the ground and 49 blocks were actually um, partially burned. It actually claimed the first red house, the first parliament building was also burned to the ground. 4,500 people were left homeless and the damage exceeded 1 million sterling pounds. So you could imagine 1 million pounds today is a lot of money so imagine 1808 that was an exorbitant amount of destruction and it is known as trinidad's first official catastrophe and the town was later rebuilt of stone governor hislop at the time he passed a law that all buildings in port Spain had to be made of stone to prevent another you know catastrophe like this from happening again governor hislop's successors continued with his legislation and in 1844 sir henry mccloyd laid the first foundational stones for a new government building on the site where the red house stands today and that building was made of stone i have a link to all my sources in the description so if you want to read this for yourself now that is it for today's video it was very interesting reading all of this and i really felt heartbroken for the people who went through this fire because to lose everything in a fire is honestly a terrible thing and for a whole city to be flattened that is that is just devastating and traumatic so the people of that time must have been so traumatized by that but you know everybody is resilient they got back up and they built the city with stone let me know if you knew all these details about this fire in the comments below and what i was thinking about when i was um researching all of this after i ended i was like what happened to dr shaw i know he was drunk and he started the fire did he get out did he die in the fire was he 
held accountable for the destruction and the lives that he caused I couldn't find anything so I really don't know what consequences he faced for causing this fire if any at all um, if he even survived so let me know what you think down in the comments below as always I appreciate that you watch the video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and until next time bye